The pH scale is what's called a logarithmic scale. Let me explain. A typical coffee has a pH of about 5, so it's a very weak acid. Orange juice has a pH of about 4, so it's a stronger acid. And grape juice has a pH of about 3, again stronger. Now for every change of 1 on the logarithmic pH scale, there's a tenfold change in the number of H plus ions, assuming you've got the same amount of liquid of course. So a cup of orange juice has 10 times as many H plus ions as a cup of coffee does, and a cup of grape juice has 10 times as many H plus ions as a cup of orange juice. So mathematically, it makes sense that a cup of grape juice has 100 times as many H plus ions as a cup of coffee does. Lemon juice with a pH of 2 has 10 times as many H plus ions as a cup of grape juice, 100 times as many H plus ions as a cup of orange juice, and 1000 times as many H plus ions as a cup of coffee. That's how the pH scale works. It's the same on the base side of the scale. Soapy water with a pH of 10 has 10 times the concentration of OH- ions as an antacid mixture of pH 9. And bleach with a pH of 11 has 10 times the concentration of OH- ions as soapy water. So bleach has 100 times as many OH- ions as an equal amount of antacid mixture. So a logarithmic scale is a scale where each number represents 10 times more than the previous number. Logarithmic scales make it easier to express huge variations in quantities. The power of earthquakes is also measured on a logarithmic scale. A magnitude 8 earthquake has 10 times as much power as a magnitude 7 earthquake, which has 10 times as much power as a magnitude 6 earthquake. A logarithmic scale is used because the strongest earthquakes have billions of times more energy than the weakest ones. In contrast, linear scales are probably what we're more used to. Temperature is a linear scale. If you heat up one kilogram of water from 20 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius, you need 4,200 joules of energy. To then go from 21 degrees Celsius to 22 degrees Celsius, you need another 4,200 joules of energy, and so on. Equal amounts of energy input create equal changes in temperature. Now back to pH, this is half a cup of orange juice, and it has a pH of four. If I now water it down by half, the pH increases to only 4.3. You can halve the concentration and the pH doesn't change that much. Let me demonstrate with this simulation. I'll first place this pH meter into this beaker. If I pour 0.1 litres of battery acid, that is sulfuric acid, into the beaker, we can see that it has a pH of 1. In other words, battery acid is very strongly acidic. If I now water down the acid with 0.1 litres of water, so that the concentration is halved, the pH rises to only 1.3. If I now add more water to get to 0.5 litres in the beaker, the acid concentration is now only one-fifth of what it was originally. There are now four parts water and one part battery acid. But the pH is still only 1.7. It hasn't changed all that much. If I now add another half a litre of water, so that the acid's concentration gets to only one-tenth of what it was originally, we can see that the pH rises to 2. So let me say again, the concentration of H plus ions in an acid with a pH of 1 is 10 times greater than the concentration of H plus ions in an acid with a pH of 2. I can also say that per litre there are 10 times as many H plus ions in an acid with a pH of 1, as there are H plus ions in an acid with a pH of 2. I can now drain my pH 2 acid, leaving just 0.1 litres of it, and then add water again, so that the concentration of H plus ions again decreases by a factor of 10. The pH before I added water was 2, and since its concentration is now only one tenth of what it was, its pH is now 3. Again, a tenfold decrease in H plus concentration causes a change in pH of 1, from 2 to 3 this time. If I now drain the heavily watered down battery acid again, and then water it down again by a factor of 10, the pH rises to 4. So I started with an acid with a pH of 1. 
it was watered down by a factor of 10 and then watered down by a factor of 10 again and then watered down by a factor of 10 again. So the concentration of H plus ions in the final watered down solution was one one thousandth of the original concentration and the pH changed from one to four. So if we look at just orange juice and the acid in car batteries, which are actually called lead acid batteries with pHs of about four and one respectively, then one liter of battery acid has 10 times 10 times 10, that is 1000 times as many H plus ions as a liter of orange juice. If orange juice gets into your eyes, it stings a little, but we can obviously drink orange juice. Sulfuric acid though, won't just sting if it gets in your eyes, let me put it that way, and you definitely don't want to drink it. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from Shedding Light on Acids and Bases Episode 5, Advanced Acid Base Chemistry. The Shedding Light on Acids and Bases series is aimed at middle school science students and covers everything that they need to know about acids and bases. In Episode 5, we take a deeper look at pH and explain how the numbers on the pH scale are actually related to the number of H plus ions or OH minus ions present in an acid or base. We then descend even deeper down to the atomic level to explain what actually happens when acids react with bases and what happens when they react with metals. We introduce students to ionic equations and to the role, or lack thereof, of spectator ions in many chemical reactions. The episode can be thought of as an extension to middle school acid-base chemistry or as an introduction to senior school acid-base chemistry. Visit our website, links in the description below, to download the accompanying student activity sheet and in fact all of our student activity sheets, including a wide selection of pracs. Our website also has details about how you can watch the whole program and the whole series. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching.